Hello and welcome to another Portworks demo. Today we're going to talk about how Portworks and OpenShift virtualization can work together so that you can run virtual machines side by side with your container workloads in OpenShift. Now, there are several reasons you might want to do this. Portworks gives you that common storage layer for both containers and your virtual machines, thanks to OpenShift's implementation of kubevert, which is known as OpenShift virtualization. This gives you one single common platform that you can use for both your modern application workloads that are run on containers, as well as some of your older workloads or other workloads that may require virtual machines. There's several benefits to this. Portworks enables live migration of virtual machines between Kubernetes worker nodes when you're running on something like kubevert or OpenShift virtualization. It also enables HA of those virtual machines if a Kubernetes worker node fails. So the combination of those two gives you some similar features compared to, say, DRS or HA in a VMware environment when you're running on OpenShift or Kubernetes. This is great because it allows you to run those containers and virtual machines side by side without maintaining multiple infrastructure stacks in your organization. Now we're going to show you the migration of a VM from vSphere into OpenShift virtualization today, but keep in mind that you can run Portworks and have us service the storage for your virtual machines on any Kubernetes distribution that supports kubevert. Let's get started. Okay, so we've got a standard OpenShift 4.12 cluster here. But first, let's take a look at our source, which is going to be vSphere. I have one simple virtual machine running. It's running CentOS 7. And let's log in and just write some data to it. And we'll check for this file whenever we migrate the VM. Let's take a look at the file contents. Okay, so we've got some data written to our VM while it's on the source provider here. Next, let's take a look at what's installed inside OpenShift. First, let's look at the operators that are installed in this cluster. We have OpenShift virtualization, which gives us our kubevert capabilities and ability to run virtual machines inside OpenShift. I've also installed the migration toolkit for virtualization operator. And this is based on an open source project called Forklift, which enables you to migrate virtual machines from one provider to another. Finally, I've installed that Portworx Enterprise operator and configured a storage cluster so that we have that common platform for storage for our persistent volumes for containers, as well as for our virtual machine disks. Next, let's take a look at the virtualization section of the OpenShift UI. You can see here I don't have any virtual machines currently running, and I've created a project in OpenShift, or namespace, called VMs, which is going to be our target for our migration. Next, let's take a look at the objects that the migration toolkit provides us. First, we have providers. And as you can see here, we have a vCenter configured for our source provider and our OpenShift virtualization provider configured 
as a kubevert target. The only other things that we need to configure are network maps and storage maps. And these define the source network and destination network, and source storage and destination storage during your migration plan. As you can see, I've configured a single network map here with our source network, which is the VDS port group in my vSphere cluster. And then I have my VLAN 128 tagged network that's configured on my Kubernetes worker nodes. Similar thing for our storage maps. We have our vSAN data store in the vCenter configured as our source. And then one of our Portworx shared storage classes, which provides read write many functionality as our target storage class. So let's go ahead and migrate a VM. All we need to do is create a migration plan within the OpenShift UI. We'll call this migration test. Next, we need to select our source provider, which is our vSphere vCenter, and then select our target provider, which is our OpenShift virtualization enabled OpenShift cluster. Finally, I'll select a target namespace, and as I mentioned earlier, we're going to migrate this into the VM's namespace. Next, we're going to select the location in our vCenter that we want to view the virtual machines from, and that will bring up all of the virtual machines running on that vCenter. So you can see here we have our migration test virtual machine. I'll go ahead and select that. And if you want to see what these warnings are, you can see that we don't have change block tracking enabled, and it gives you some warnings about DRS NHA as well. We'll talk about the change block tracking here in just a second. Next, we're going to select the network mapping for our VLAN 128 network and then the storage mapping, telling the toolkit that we want to copy the VMDKs from our vSAN data store and migrate those to QCOW2 images that are running as persistent volumes using our Portworx shared storage class. We're going to perform a cold migration today because I haven't enabled change block tracking on the virtual machine that's the source. Now if the source VM had CBT enabled, we could do a warm migration where it incrementally copies data from the source VM. And then it performs a final cutover, which then shuts down that source VM and the final VM data from the VMDK and all of the metadata is copied over. This is a neat feature in the Migration Toolkit where you can add an Ansible playbook to run any post-migration hooks in case you need to reconfigure the virtual machine or configure OpenShift for things like exposing services if you desire. So it looks like our migration plan is good to go. We'll click Finish here. And we can see our migration plan is in a ready state, and I can click the start button to go ahead and begin the migration. So there are multiple steps in the migration whenever you run one of these with the migration toolkit. First, it's going to initialize the migration, and what it's going to do is shut down our source VM and prepare it for migration. Next, it's going to create the persistent volume claim and persistent volume 
as the target disk for our virtual machine in OpenShift. So if we come over and take a look at the PVCs, you can see it's created a 18 gig persistent volume with a read write mini access mode using the storage class that we defined in our storage map. It's going to go ahead and copy the data from the source VMDK into that persistent volume and then convert that image to a kubevert image and this is where we're going from a VMDK format to a QCOW2 format. We'll go ahead and let this run and once it's done we should be able to log in to our VM on OpenShift. Okay, we can see that our migration plan was successful and has completed. And just to show you, if we come back over to our source vCenter, we can see that our source VM is shut down and no longer available and powered on within vSphere. Now if we come over to the virtualization section of the OpenShift UI, we can see that our virtual machine has been migrated and is up and running on our Worker 2 node. Now let's go ahead and open the console of our VM, log in, And let's take a look at that file that we created while the VM was running on vSphere. So there we go. We've copied all of the virtual machine's data, converted the disk to a QCOW2 image format, and created the virtual machine object within OpenShift. Now, the real goodness that Portworx gives us here is that capability to perform live migrations of the virtual machine and HA of the virtual machine. And this is due to our ability to have read-write many volumes backing the virtual machine's storage. So let's do a simple test here and just select Migrate and note that it's running on Worker 2 again. So we'll click Migrate. We should see our status go from running to migrating. And we can see that OpenShift has moved our virtual machine over to our Worker Zero node. The great thing here is that our virtual machine was uninterrupted due to the live migration. Our file's still there along with the data inside of it. Next, let's go ahead and cordon this Worker 0 node and delete the virtual machine. And we should see it start up on another Worker node inside of our OpenShift cluster. So let's get our node list here. Go ahead and cordon that node. And cordoning the node will just make sure that it's not rescheduled on the same node that it was running on. Okay, so our node is cordoned. Now let's go ahead and delete our virtual machine object. And you can see here's our migration test virtual machine, which is running via the vert launcher migration test pod. So let's go ahead and delete that.
you can see that our virtual machine status is stopped. So this really simulates a worker node in the OpenShift cluster going down. And what should happen here is we should see our virtual machine get rescheduled on a node different than worker zero once the delete is complete. You can see it's starting up there. And our virtual machine is now back up and running on our worker two node. So let's take a look at it. We'll open our console to our virtual machine. Let's log in. And there's our test file that we previously wrote. So this is a great example of the benefits that Portworks gives you whenever you're running virtual machines along with your containers on the same Portworks storage cluster inside OpenShift or any other Kubernetes distribution that supports KubeVirt. That's all for today's demo. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's piqued your interest a little bit about running virtual machines inside Kubernetes on top of a shared storage cluster such as Portworx. Until next time, thank you very much.